good evening everyone so let's start the evening of today we'll be talking about literature review reference writing and reference management okay so uh, well we have taken on a herculean task and let's see by end of one and a half hours we hope that all of us will be able to appraise the importance of performing a literature review describe the steps in performing a literature review outline the steps in writing the review discuss the very salient features of pubmed search again very important part list the reference management softwares and then we'll attempt to describe the features of mendeley all right so now going on to what is literature literature originally is derived from a latin word literatura literatura which literally means learning or writing originally litera referred to letter meaning literary production or a work literature basically is a extensive search of information available on a topic which results in a list of references to books periodicals and other materials on the topic so if i put it very simply it's anything and everything which is available for us to read through on a given topic now literature review two important words so if literature is there we need to review it what does that mean what do we mean by literature review so a literature review basically examines and evaluates the scholarly literature on a topic it's a in depth review of already published and also unpublished work in the given area or on the particular topic now in our last webinar we discussed about the problem you know a problem which can make us think about a research question this particular research question once i have in my mind we discussed how to frame the research question now we know what is it that we are thinking about now i know what i am thinking about it's important for me to know what about my contemporaries what are they thinking about the work which I, work which, which or a question which is burning me which is making me think about doing research this is what constitutes a literature review so today this is the part of our whole flow chart which we will be discussing all right now what is the purpose of doing this literature review any research or research whichever discipline it is whether it's arts and humanities science health science any discipline needs to be situated in relation to what has already been done in the field what does that mean i need to know where i stand with respect to the topic i am thinking about what has been done so the most important aspect which literature review or reviewing looking at going through a literature helps us in finding out what is already known now if i already know certain things about a topic it makes it easier for me to locate gaps and justify why am i planning to undertake a new research very important next aspect of reviewing the literature it helps me locate the work of important theorists seminal articles you know the people who are leaders in their own field people who are young researchers whose idea will basically may be give a base to my research important for me to review a literature to identify what are the useful methodologies methods and document the various sources now i may plan to do research in a particular way if that particular way has been done it gives me a very good guide maybe i can follow it maybe i can think of some separate methodology if i go through somebody else's literature a published work i understand the limitations in those studies why do i want to know the limitations so that i can avoid them so that i can find my way around those limitations or probably modify the design so as to throw some new light and discover some new knowledge with respect to the given topic so reviewing the literature helps me in everything uh in uh, making my in streamlining my research topic in identifying my methodology in modifying my study design and so on now what are the resources which are available for us to review which are the sources of this literature these may be books you know our age old standard printed books they can of course be ebooks also journals 
print journals, online journals, any journals, research reports, institutional and government publication, internet resource, and a category which we are not often aware of, which is known as grey literature. What's grey literature? Well, it refers to sources of information other than traditional form of publication, such as books and journal articles. It can include documents from government, non-government organizations, professional guidelines. This is a very important part of our grey literature. The various patents, you know, when we look at a patent document, that itself can be an important source of great, uh, important source of resource for us and a wide variety of other material. Now, why is this important for us to know? Because this grey literature can be found in many different places. These are the literature which are not found in the standard sources which we are all very well aware of or what we are going to look into. So it's important for us to know that when we are reviewing literature for a topic, we should look at not just the traditional forms of publication, but also this grey literature. It might throw an insight into what we are trying to do. Now, before we move on, what do we mean by published articles? The published articles, the ones which we are very aware of, include things like original research articles, case reports, brief communication, review articles, editorials, which may be invited or by, you know, maybe written by a particular authority in a particular field, letter to editors, which are often written, you know, by people who are doing initial work, they would just like to bring, it's not yet a full research, they would just like to share opinion or a thought process. Hypothesis, there are journals which only print hypothesis. Some of the uh, published articles types, which are not very commonly known are clinical procedures, investigations, technical reports. These are a very important category of published articles. Commentary, conference reports and, uh, conference reports and proceedings, and perspective. So these are the variety of published articles which we come across. Now, one more type of classification of sources of information. Information in whichever discipline it is, arts, medical and health sciences, humanities, can primarily be, can be of three types based on the source. A primary source, this includes the actual data. For example, lab notes, or interview in case of uh, qualitative analysis, original research data, a journal article, a case report, a conference paper, reporting of a clinical trial, a survey result. This is the primary work which is done by a researcher. When this work is looked at, and articles such as review articles come out of it, they are known as review articles or secondary sources. The review article may be systematic review. When we define, create exclusive exclusion criteria, we define the way in which we are reviewing the articles or they can be meta analysis. Tertiary source of information is the one which is derived from primary and secondary sources. These are simple things such as definition, Encyclopedias, where they will quote the primary or secondary source and they will just give me a concise information. The most important source of tertiary, uh, tertiary source is our textbooks. So, before any information reaches the textbooks, remember it's always in the primary source or that's the original research article. And there are review articles from where, which gives rise to the data coming in these textbooks. Encyclopedias dictionary. That is why a researcher doesn't often rely on this tertiary source of information. This is more for the preparation of simple classes or for an undergraduate level or for a postgraduate to prepare his classes. But when we are doing research, we would ideally like to depend on the primary or the secondary research. Okay, so let's ask you a question now. Uh, I would like you all to go to your chat and tell me what databases have you used, whether it's your library sources or the e-databases. So can we have some responses as to what are the various databases that you have all used?
books, website, journals, Google Scholar, all right. What more? Something new coming up? Journals, okay. Official yes, official government databases. Web of Science, okay. Now we are talking the e-sources, yes. You know, actually in today's age, most of us refer to the e-databases. So anything else? All right. Anything else coming up from there? Blogs, blogs yes, extremely mm -hmm. important. Okay. They, they, you know, blogs often act as a source of generating some ideas. So I may not be able to quote from them, but yes, they are definitely going to click that thing, you know, where we can generate ideas. Yes. Anything, anything interesting? Somebody said Cochrane Review. Okay, yes, Vichy, thank you. Cochrane Reviews, right? Extremely important. We'll be just talking briefly, touching upon that also. Okay, so shall I move on then? All right, okay. So these are just some of the common examples of databases which we are using. Okay, now when we talk of sources, the source can be our traditional library, the physical library. It can refer, it can refer to our databases, which are usually the internet databases. Google Scholar, which is not just a search engine, but also very important source, websites of, like you all already mentioned, the organization, government departments, NGOs, etc. Now, what do we mean by database? A database is a collection of data that is organized in such a way that it is quick and easy to search for and retrieve specific information using computer. A database can be accessed using internet. And just how we arrange or classify things in a library, the database can also be organized in various ways. For example, it may be organized by the fields, it may be organized by records, files, the year of publication, the areas, the topics, the authors, the journals which are present in it, uh, the type of research articles which are present in it. So various databases can be organized in various ways. Why should I know this? Well, because if I know how the database is organized, it makes it easy for me to retrieve information from the particular database. Now, some of the very common databases which we are aware of, PubMed, PubMed Central, Embase, that's Excerpta Medica database, which also includes in its corpus the PubMed, Scopus, Cochrane Library, Sinhal, which is uh, giving me a lot of data about nursing work, up to date, Helinet, Absco-host. These the list is actually much more than this. I have just listed out some of those which are very commonly used. Now, this is how the PubMed homepage looks. If you see what is highlighted in yellow, this particular PubMed homepage is going to now change, and this will be our new PubMed homepage beginning mid May, as it mentions on their screen. The next is Cochrane Library, a very important source. What is it? Cochrane is a database of systematic review. It is a leading journal database for reviews in healthcare field. And it's a global and an independent network of researcher, uh, professional patient care, carers, and people interested in health. So it gives a lot of uh, not just systematic reviews, but also the protocols for Cochrane reviews. Advantage of protocols? Well, they can help me plan my research. This is how some of the Cochrane pages look. Now, very important thing, Scopus. Uh, product of Elsevier, it contains 24,600 active titles and over 5,000 publishers. The advantage or the benefit or the, you know, the good part about Scopus is it's got an independent review board and uses the rich underlying data of metadata architecture to connect published ideas and with institution and people. Scopus but requires institutional login IDs to be there. Hinari. Hinari is another access to research or health programs. So these were the various databases which we spoke about. Uh, now I'll hand over to Animesh to carry us through the remaining part of the talk.
Yeah, you can start sharing. Okay. So we will start with the second part and we'll take you through the various searching strategies. Let me just, let me just get the presentation on. Okay, so I think the presentation is on. Right, so let's move forward. Now, many a times we will see that when we want to do a literature review, now this may not be just for our research, but many other purposes. And that's what is represented here, if you see. Now, this could be a part of a larger work that is when you're like you're doing some research thesis dissertation for the, the postgraduate stresses and fellows it could also be a part of something like a journal article that you're undertaking to write and there you want to build up and usually it will be in the introduction if you see most of the journal articles they do not have a separate section called journal i mean review of literature but they incorporate it within the introductory part of it there could be standalone reviews itself it can be published in the in the journals and of course as you saw cochrane reviews are there which are specialized reviews which are uh, systematic reviews and then you lead on to meta-analysis by doing statistical analysis of that it could also be a plain review article where you are reviewing information available about certain things for example the treatment modalities of a particular disease now you want to review that or you want to see from historical perspective till now so you want to trace that and that could be a review article it could also be a course assessment so these are standalone works which are only reviews at the same time you can have as i said for a larger work it will be just a part of it will be the review itself so these are some of the things which you do or you undertake a review for coming to the structure now if you are looking for an article where you're writing an article now introduction the the big you know part the, uh, the inverted pyramid it says uh, the big part the background and then you have the narrower categories and then you see uh, the categories or studies closest to your research you trickle down to like you know a, a, a conical sharp uh, the top which is inverted and then you make a hypothesis statement so this is how you go from general to specific that's you know, you start from the broad and then you narrow down and then you go down to, to a very specific area. Now, many people sometimes say that, you know, I'm starting and last time we touched on our, uh, in our webinar, that many a times you may not have, uh, uh, for example, uh, much of review uh, to do because a lot of literature is not available. So if you see this representation here, now, if you look at it, the amount of literature reviews and amount of published research, now amount of published research is in the y-axis and amount of literature reviews that you need to do is on the x-axis. Now, if you look at it, it shows that if you have to identify the research question and moderate amount of, say, literature reviews, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, moderate amount of literature is available, so you need to do a little of literature review and you'll be able to find out. But however, if you find that there is no literature available and you know you want to do literature review that goes to the, the upper quadrant here. So if you see, there will be a need for a literature review there. And many a times there is a lot of literature available. Now, when there is a lot of literature available and many a times reviews are also available, so you need to do a review of reviews. That means you need to synthesize from the reviews that are already available and that's what you can do and then many a times a lot of literature is available but published research uh, i mean sorry uh, uh, literature is not much available but you need to do review and then that time you will do a review pointing out the need for more research because by going through the literature because there is a scarce literature available you'll be able to come up with the the kind of you know lacunae or the gap which is there and that's you know, helping you to move forward in your area for research. So that's the 
the whole idea. Now coming to the, the literature review process itself, we'll go into the specifics after a few minutes. So if you look at it, we start with obviously selecting a topic. Now we select a topic, and as I said in the last webinar, we start usually with a broad idea and then we narrow it down and trickle it down and then you know you uh, come to the specifics. So sometimes you might start with the broad topic itself. And within that broad topic, sometimes you might have a couple of ideas. So you start with that and then you start searching the literature. The idea is you search the literature in that broad area, or sometimes you've already narrowed down, then it's all right, then you can still start searching the literature. So you go into the stop, uh, step two and then start searching the literature. Then you go on and then review each of them. You jot down things, you build up your argument, you build your case, and then further you survey the literature because now you've got a better gist and you've got very specific things. So you survey the literature further. Now you start critiquing the literature. And we will go into that segment and touch on that. You know, how do we use things like summarizing, paraphrasing, you know, and quotations and things like that. So we'll give you examples and show you that uh, in the later part of this presentation. So you start critiquing the literature. And critiquing doesn't mean that you, you just take from everywhere and then, you know, start pasting or, or just uh, verbatim, you copy it and quote it. It's not required. You need to digest, assimilate, and then put it in your own words. And then you write the review. So this is the whole process of the literature review. Now, it's very important when you start doing the literature search or review, you need to plan. And planning is a must because if we don't plan for it, then it's going to be a debacle. So for comprehensive literature searching, it is important to be systematic in the approach and includes a plan for the search, which includes the search terms that we will be using and the resources that I'll search. Now, many a times if you have gone through, and especially if you have gone through the Cochrane reviews, it has a very meticulous search strategy which is put up. In fact, Cochrane reviews are one of the best that you can have because it's, it's very systematic and it has meticulously put up everything. And anybody using the same search strategy will come up with similar kind of conclusions because you will come with the same literatures and everything that they have done and then synthesis of that and come out with analysis. Very importantly, which most of us forget, is keeping a record of the searches that we carry on. In fact, some of the universities, even in India that I know of, uh, they are moving towards that even in PG dissertations, they say that you need to spell out your search strategy, which is a very good idea. Because once you have spelled out the search strategy, it becomes very clear, how did you go about and did you go about comprehensive search or not? Now, this is how we go about uh, strategizing for searching. So identify the key concepts and terms, then select the relevant databases. Some of them were listed out just a few minutes back and you select your resources, which can be any of the sources that are available. Combine the search terms with Boolean operators and we'll go into Boolean. If somebody has used it, very good. If not, we will just give you a gist of that as well. Then run search in the selected research that you have selected. Now you might have to do it for different resources. You might not confine only to one resource. You might have to go through different databases, different resources and do this. And then once you've done that, review your whatever that uh, return or result of that search has been, refine your search results and then go about writing it. So this is the whole way of going about. And then sometimes you might have to go in for another cycle of that by refining your search results and then again identifying the key concepts and terms and then again going on for a, a further search now for those who would like to you know uh, go through a, a good paper about tips for searching literature i have put up on the screen a qr code which in case you have a qr code scanner it will lead you directly to the paper or if you don't have that you have the, the url for that paper which is a very good guide and you can use it for your uh, help. So this is the resource. I'll just pause for a few seconds so that you can uh, go through that. So this is a very good guide for uh, searching literature and this can help you.
Ma'am, it's not a question. It is suggestion. I think you can it's carry on. Okay. So I'll move forward. All right. So now, as I've already said, we start with the topic. We identify keywords, and then we start with the search. Now, based on our results, many a times we will have few new keywords thrown up. We might discover that there are, you know, similar kind of words, or there are other words which also mean similar kind of things. So based on that, we will get new keywords. We will again go for search. Many a times review results will lead to another search. And then based on all this, finally, when we synthesize and then we evaluate. And based on that, again, if required, we might go on for search. In fact, those who go in for a doctoral studies would realize that the literature review is almost never ending process. Or even people who write uh, good articles very comprehensively, they realize that it goes on and on till you are finally finalizing your final manuscript and then. So it, it is an ongoing process, and especially if you're looking into a, a huge research, even when you have started off with your research, it keeps on going on. Now, how do you develop your search strategy? So basically, as I said in the previous slide, we identify the keywords and the concepts. Now, those who had joined us in the last webinar would realize and remember that we had used a particular example which we carried forward. And I'm taking it from that same example on uh, the same screen. If you see that blue, for example, we had talked about healthcare workers using some kind of uh, methods or strategies to communicate effectively with, with the people who have hearing disability. So we'll take that same example forward so that you have a continuity and you can connect. So now let's think of this, what strategies can healthcare workers use to communicate effectively with patients with a hearing disability. Now, if I have to do a literature review to come up with certain things for this particular topic, so how do I go about? So what do I do? I break it down. I take each component as a separate concept. Now here you might be able to identify a few things which will be forming a separate concept or at least you know different keywords and things like that. Now once you have a concept for each you derive a keyword and once you do that you can start with your search so please remember many a times you might find that there is only a, a one word that you have listed but there might be different forms so singular and plural forms sometimes different spellings because of variations in english there might be acronyms there might be you know subject headings so all those things also have to be kept in mind i'll illustrate this with an example in the next slide so once we have this, let's see uh, how do we go about searching for this particular question. That is, what strategies can healthcare workers use to communicate effectively with patients with a hearing disability? Now, if you look at this, what I've done is, first thing was strategies or methods. So there are ways or methods which they are using or employing. So that's my concept one. Then the second is the concept two. Who, who are doing this? So healthcare workers or healthcare professionals could be the alternate term or health personnel, health professional. All these mean similar things, right? So I have put that as a one group. Then the third concept, if you see, I have put as communication because we talked about how these healthcare workers or what strategies or what methods are they using to communicate with people who have hearing disability. So communication, communicating, interpersonal communication or communication skills. So all this goes as, of course, you may expand this, but I'm just giving an example so that you get an idea. So all that groups as a search concept number three. And the fourth on the rightmost in the column, if you see, I have put as hearing disability because that's very important. And that's one of the keys I'm looking at because I'm trying to see how healthcare workers are communicating with people who have hearing disability. Now I have used alternate terms also. Hearing impairment, hearing impaired, deaf, hard of hearing, all these are kind of terms which can be interchangeably used many a times to denote that people who have difficulty in hearing. So these may be used and that's why that's the concept. Now, so far so good, I hope. Any questions in particular? Anything that, that has come up? Any, any burning question? All right, so uh, let's- Somebody has asked, do, uh, do all search engines uh, work well with Boolean operation? Uh, mo most of them actually do work. Google Scholar works well. Uh, PubMed works well. Uh, even Scopus works. I think most of them in my experience work well. 
the mm. boolean operators they work well okay uh, sir there is one question on uh, how how to use and and or effectively in searches i'm i'm coming to that i'm coming yeah. to that yeah. i'm just building on this concept i'll take you there i'm okay. sure i'm showing the example the same example i'll take it forward and i'll show you that sure all sure. right yeah right so now please remember here since i have tried that and all so you will realize that many articles or most of them don't use the word strategies okay they might use methods now then after that i will drop that out and that's why that's the red square there so i wouldn't know as of now maybe but later when i have done a little preliminary preliminary research or something then i would have an idea and of course with experience some people get an idea as well so i will drop that later okay so i will continue further now this is what i was talking about and somebody has just asked a question as well now we use something known as boolean operators boolean operators are nothing but these are or and and not now we usually use these to narrow down or or maybe make our search more meaningful and specific now for example in this when i use hearing impaired or deaf so all these articles which are either with hearing impaired or deaf mentioned in those articles this search will return that so when i say you know hearing impaired or and please remember when i use these boolean operators i have used them in capital so or has to be capital and has to be capital not has to be capital so when i use or then it has to be uh, hearing impaired or capital deaf so when i do that i will get all the articles which use either of them okay now if i want to say that hearing impaired and communication now this is again to combine the concepts the first one when i use or usually it is to combine the synonyms but the second one that is and i will try to combine the concept now hearing impaired if you remember in my previous slide was one concept and communication was another so i am trying to combine these two so hearing impaired and communication because i am interested in knowing about papers which describe hearing impairment and communication so when i use this as and i will get all the papers which describe these two together if there is a paper which describes only hearing impaired or there is another paper which talks about communication i will not get those papers if i use this boolean that is a and d in capitals and and if you look at the the right bottom part of your screen if you see the orange highlight color between a and b that's the part of you know venn diagram illustration so and gives you that part that means where a and b are overlapping or interjecting so that part only i'll get i will not get a and b okay so that's the idea with and so these are known as boolean operators moving forward i've already talked about and now let's go for not now not basically is a subtraction you're trying to cut out something so here for example i say hearing impaired but not deaf so i want to say it's only hearing impairment not total deafness not deaf i want only articles which mention hearing impairment not deafness so i will use this and i will get only those articles which mention hearing impairment and not deafness i could also do uh, you know for any other thing as well and i will say that only this and not so for example if you see in the uh, the figure itself domestic violence not child abuse so i will get only articles which are domestic violence related and not child abuse related so i can do that as well now there is another concept which is known as nesting now many a times you might want to club things now you're trying to link two or more concepts that may have many synonyms like in our example again i'll take the same thing hearing impairment or deafness so deaf hearing impaired or deaf now i want to know about communication and hearing impairment or deafness so if you look at this what i have done in the first top part is communication and in capitals that's the boolean and then i put in bracket hearing impairment or hearing impaired or deaf so what happens here is i will get all those articles which have communication and hearing impaired or deaf both the terms so this is what i will get okay instead of this if at all 
i will not if i were not to use the brackets that is nesting what happens is i will get results which will have communication and hearing impairment but not uh, the deafness so i will get only the first part okay so that's the reason why i am nesting it because i want to club that as well so i want to have all the articles which have hearing impairment and deafness and i want to club that with communication that's my another concept so that's why i would like to go with that okay so going forward again if you look at it when you go through this like you will get and then you can you know depending on the databases that you're using you can go for a complete reference you can go for abstract so another term which i want to introduce here which some of you might be already familiar with is mesh that is medical subject headings now usually in pubmed and medline you can have something known as mesh so mesh is nothing but medical subject headings now to give you an example when we talk about say some term for example fever now fever fever could be uh, hyperpyrexia fever of unknown or known origin puo all this are similar kind of subjects or subject headings which can be given together so when you like just put this you may not get the other things which are mentioned in some of the articles so that's why it's better that if at all you want to you can go for mesh or medical subject headings for example i want to go for a influenza vaccination or say polio vaccination now in that again if i use the mesh it might give me so many other things and i can explode it explode means you click on that and then you will get lot of other things so it will be termed under vaccination it will be under again specific types of vaccination it will be under disease it, infectious disease so many things so you will get an idea and if you want you can go further narrower down as well so more specific to it if you focus a subject heading you limit your search to only those documents in which your subject heading is considered the major point of the article now if you are wanting to do a very comprehensive literature review please don't go for this because it will focus it down to a very narrow at the same time uh, you can have subheadings now subheadings is again like you know under each of them you will have certain subheadings as i just mentioned to you vaccination again under vaccination you can have live vaccines you can have attenuated vaccines again under live vaccines you will have different subtypes so it goes subheadings wise so subject headings may not be available for certain topics and if at all if you're trying to use them you use them only when it relates very closely to your research question so how do you do that many a times uh, if you look at the scope book note then it will provide a definition of the subject heading so you can do that now i'll just give you an example here if you look at this particular article again you know so this is about the deaf women and all that so healthcare experiences of deaf women is the you know the idea now here all these are listed as mesh subject heading so if you are looking at it will be classified under so many things because here you have adolescents adults aged people you know things like deafness so you have so many things persons with hearing impairment you know it might have qualitative research you may have women women's health because all these people because it's deaf, deaf women so women's health so it will be listed under so many things so if you go for medical subject headings it will be in different categories it will be listed so if you want to narrow it down you will have to again go into like one particular specific and then decide on that now again when you use it see here to give you an example hearing disorders again here when you say this you might have synonyms like this hearing loss hyperacusis tinnitus any of these things because all this can be clubbed under hearing disorders now if i click on that hearing disorders i will get hearing loss and hearing loss if i just click on that to expand i will get so many things under that as well now hearing loss itself will give me so many uh, say articles now if i look at that you know i can go for each of the things deafness hearing loss bilateral conductive less, uh, hearing loss functional hearing loss again if i want very specifically that i want to restrict my search only to conductive hearing loss i can tick this and then i can go for this and i can zero in on only those number of articles that is 3190 articles i don't have to look through 
one lakh twenty or sorry twelve thousand five hundred and ten articles. So it depends on what exactly I'm looking at, and then this helps me to narrow down my search focus so that I can reach what I require. So similarly, I can just go and search and put whatever I require. Now the other thing is, if I want very specifically that it should be what I'm looking for. I can use another thing that is known as quotation marks. So I can use a phrase within inverted comma or quotation marks, and that will give me the the result what I'm looking for. For example, here if I use hearing impaired in quotation marks, I will get only those articles which have this as a a word. I mean, a phrase itself listed. So in some databases, words may be searched separately if the quote marks are not used. For example, if I don't use these search uh, in in search as a quote mark, I might get articles which say hearing, which say impairment or impaired, and which also say hearing impaired. So I will get so many articles. But if I use it within the inverted commas, that is in quotation marks, I will get only articles which are giving me hearing impaired specifically mentioned in those articles. So that helps me again. So these are some of the small small things and tips which can help us in you know streamlining our search. Another thing which can be used is truncation. Now, let me honestly admit that I have not used it very extensively uh, initially and in between we used to use, but then, but this is also an idea which can be used. And what you do is you actually use an asterisk or a star symbol, and at the end of the word, you add this. Now, basically, we use it at the root of the word, okay? And many a times it helps in retrieving singular, plural, and other variations of the keyword. For example, we talked about strategy there. So strategy can be shortened to strategy because strategy, strategy, strategic, strategize, all that comes from that. So I stop at the common part of it, S-T-R-A-T-E-G, strategy, and put a star there. So once I do that, now all those articles which use any of the things like strategy, strategies, strategic, strategize, whatever, all that will be retrieved. Now, if I don't want to use such a strategy to you know, get all the articles, then I can either use or, and that will also give me, so I can specifically limit it to strategy or strategies. Then it will give me only those two things. It will not give me strategic, strategize, or whatever else. Okay. So I can do that and narrow down further. So this is another idea. There's something known as wildcard as well. Now here what we do is we put a question mark or a hashtag. So this replaces zero or one or more characters in the middle of the word. For example, woman. Instead of that, you put W-O-M and then hashtag N. So this will give me woman or women in plural. Pediatric again has two different spellings. So when I say P query, E-D-I-A-T-R-I-C, it will help me give me pediatric as well as pediatric, both the spellings. So this is again a wild card. Now just to give you again examples. So if I'm using truncation, for example, for infect, asterisk or star, it will give me all the things like infect, infected, infection, infections, infectious, infecting, all that. Similarly, when I put a wild card with a query, ischemia, it gives me both the spellings. So this is how we can again go for search. Now coming to the, again, when I, I use that, go back to that example we have talked about, healthcare worker or healthcare worker, you know, so I can use that as an asterisk. If you see, I've also used inverted comma here. I can also make it healthcare worker, healthcare worker asterisk, then healthcare professional, health professional, health personnel. So all those articles which use any of these terms, will be listed because I've said or. But please remember, after all that, I'm looking at and. So when I say and, I want communicate asterisk. So in this, anything with communication, communicating, communicator, whatever will come. Then I put in, inverted commas, interpersonal communication or communication skill with the asterisk. Again, skill, skills, whatever, you know, skill set, all that will come here. And hearing disability. Now disability, I put asterisk, so give me disability, disabilities, all that. Impair, impairment and all that. Impair, so that, and this will give me a very good. So if you document it also, it will also give you the idea that tomorrow, if somebody sees, they know what 
search strategy you have used and they will also be able to get to the same kind of results so this is the search strategy okay now let me just show you some screenshots and i'll try to take you to the uh, the uh, online pubmed as well to give you some idea now i tried looking at a uh, little while earlier today substance abuse among youth now when i use this in pubmed site you see i get 60751 results okay and it says that if i change it to substance abuse along youth it will give me only 848 results so it's asking me did you mean that then i said okay let me go in for now if you look at the left here so if you look at left here now here i can actually go in and and uh, shortlist only free full text so when i do that free full text i will get only those articles which have a free full text available now if you see here it's only 295 results out of whatever that i had in 60751 only 295 of that is available as a free full text in pubmed now i move forward and what i did was i changed my strategy a bit so i used six, uh, this substance abuse and youth so when i do that uh, i will get if you look at it 60751 still because that was even otherwise giving me same now i say substance abuse or youth so either of them okay so any article which has either of them will come here and you see the volume of the number of articles it's much more now so this is how it changes when i use boolean okay now i want to say that no i want to specify this that i want only youth not elderly if any paper has both the things i will take only those which have youth so when i do that from 2 uh, 2 3 34 8 27 i narrow it down to 1 2 3 5 046 so i have further cut down and this particular boolean gives me any paper which has substance abuse or youth but not elderly now i want to go for substance abuse or youth not elderly not children so you see i have further narrowed down my search so i can shortlist it like that now i say substance abuse and youth and children and when i say that i want this that means i want all papers which have substance abuse and youth as well as children now this has further narrowed it to 18000 papers only so this is how i am narrowing down my search so let me try and give you a, a time permitting yes 5 minutes maybe i will try to demonstrate or maybe i'll do it later but uh, please remember another thing i want to show you is if you see here it shows that animesh j that's my login name for puppet so what you can do is in case you have not done for those who have not done it's a good idea that you create an account it's a free registration like any of the emails or you know any social media sites so you can create your account there and what it helps with is once you do that all your searches you can save there you can even save it on you know for temporarily for 8 hours as well and you can even mail it to yourself so you see save email directly after this i can tick and i can email it to myself or any other id i can send it to like you know clipboard so clipboard will retain it for 8 hours and another thing is if i make folders and if i put my search and save it i can save it for longer as well and the advantage is if i work on this computer i go to home and then i i work on my computer i can again log in and i can get the same thing without transferring it with myself i can go to another city and work online and then i will have all my searches saved so you must do that okay so uh now once we are done with that you should ideally read all the papers thoroughly you make notes in fact it was suggested Uh, and even now it's suggested by many people that you should have a comprehensive excel sheet or if you're not comfortable maybe at least a word document so you can have you know a systematically put up everything where you have uh, the author's name the the journal name the page numbers and everything and then what are the main features or main things of that what is the characteristic thing and so you put up everything and then you can do it's easier now with 
many of the reference managers to do that. So I will go into that segment in a few minutes from now. So basically, a reference manager helps us to actually simplify these things. We don't need to always manually do it. You can easily keep everything in one place. You can keep a track of that. You can actually cite from there. Now, once you've done that, now you need to write. Now, somebody was asking me this, and I think there was a question as well. So you need to summarize. Now, basically, please remember, many a times literature review ends up by writing, you know, bits and pieces from here and there. And they say that one study does that. And so many studies did that. And so and so in this place and this year did this on this. Now, this is not the idea. Basically, what we are trying to do is we are summarizing. And summary is nothing but it's significantly shorter than the original material. And it takes a broad overview of the source material as a whole. Okay. Now, you're writing it in your own words. Okay, so it's but please remember, even though you're summarizing it, it must be cited with in text citation and on the reference page as well, so where the source is to be cited. Now, when do you summarize? You summarize when you want to establish background or offer an overview of the topic. You want to describe the knowledge about a topic from different sources which is available, or you want to determine the main idea of a single source. So, you want to do that, you summarize. So that's when you use summarize. There's another thing which is known as paraphrasing. Now paraphrasing is stating an idea or passage in your own words. Okay. So here you will use similar thing and you will have sometimes same number of or maybe more number of words as well. Okay. But please remember here you must significantly change the wording, the phrasing and the sentence structure. Not just, you know, pick up one or two words and just change. No you need to significantly change the wording, phrasing, and sentence structure. And many a times it, in fact, leads to in increased number of words as well. That's okay. Now, these also have to be noted with in-text citation, and you need to cite the reference as well in the end. Now, when do you paraphrase? To clarify a short passage from a text. Now, please remember, as opposed to summary, summary is a huge idea or the whole paper where you're summarizing. Here, it's a short passage. Or if you feel that you've already used quotations many times and you don't want to end up using or overusing quotations, you use this to explain a point when exact wording is not very important because definitions sometimes have to be definitions and that has to be quoted to explain the main points of a passage or a paragraph or to report numerical data or statistics. Many a times in APA style, it is preferred. So you do a paraphrasing coming to quotation as you all know, Quotations is nothing but exact words. You take it word for word from the source and you put it up there. So it's actually in quotation marks you should be put. And again, please remember this also needs to be cited and put up as a reference in the reference page as well. So whether you paraphrase or summarize or quote, please remember you need to cite it in text as well as put a reference there. It's not that because I have changed my word or my words and paraphrase in my own words, I don't cite. Please remember that leads to plagiarism. That's nothing but you're using somebody else's ideas or words or, you know, or methods to write in your words without giving credit to that person. When do you use quotation? To add power to an author's words to support your argument, to dis disagree with the author's argument. So if I say, no, he has said this, however, I differ on, or to highlight a particularly eloquent or powerful phrase or a paragraph or passage. Comparing and contrasting specific points of views or to note the important research that precedes your own. I'll give you examples. If you read, you know, the original passage on top and then you see a legitimate paraphrase. So you see the bottom part is a paraphrase. Again, it's been cited and in the reference again, it will be uh, put up again. So if you look at this, it's written in a different way in the same uh, kind of uh, meaning is there. But then it's written in a uh, own words. So we move on. Now you see, basically, to give you an idea, quote, paraphrase, and summarize. This is what it is. All right. Now I will lead you to another resource which you can refer to later. But it's a very good article which says ten simple rules for writing a literature review. I've given you as a QR code in case you want to scan it or if you want to go to the it's from PLOS journals. So, you know, you will get this article and 
So this will also be put up on the chat as a resource. So you can copy it from there. And I'll give you a few seconds so that you can. All right. So what is referencing? Referencing is the acknowledgement of sources that you use in your academic work. Basically, references is essential in academic uh, skill, and you can be like you know marked on that, as well as it's a part of academic writing. Sometimes to start with, you find it difficult, but it's good to learn. And especially if you're using a particular style, please at least be familiar. You have guides and everything available, but it's always good to know that. Now, what does it consist of? It consists of two parts: citation and the reference list. Citation is nothing but you are trying to acknowledge the source in the text of the document itself. So when you keep writing, you will write it there itself in bracket or maybe as a superscript or something. And you will put in the end the, the source what you have used. So that will be at the end of your document or sometimes as a footnote as well. Okay. Why should we cite? So citing is basically to give credence to people who have done work. It's part of academic honesty and it's basically you're not doing plagiarism more on that you can look up but that's why we do there are different types of referencing style i've put very few here you know but there are many of them i'll show you some examples but we'll move forward and then we'll look at vancouver so apa style chicago style you know harvard style vancouver style many of them are there apa you can see mla chicago so all these different styles are there uh harvard is one of the styles which is used in some of the journals so if you look at Harvard, basically what it does is it when you're writing it in in text you write the author surname and year so dickens 1861 now suppose for example i have another paper by dickens which was in the year 1875 now what i will do is and if i want to cite both of them here so i'll say dickens 1861 comma dickens 1875 okay in my reference list i go by alphabetical order and i put the surname of the author per, first initial and then so all that will be done okay so that's how you go about writing a harvard reference so if you look at harvard reference will use something like this as i put up on the screen and that also somebody was writing in the chat earlier when have you accessed it it's very important so access date also is put up okay now this is something known as vancouver style and it's usually universal in fact this is most of the time and many of the times used in most of the journals and most of the other works even from the the university guidelines so in this what we do is we use uh, the arabic numbers and we use it usually as a superscript okay sometimes it's also used as inline text and in brackets but otherwise it's a superscript sometimes when with bracket or without brackets or parentheses so you usually use a number now please remember many people mistake it when you start with the first thing itself whether it's an introduction or anywhere the first time you refer to a particular source is numbered as one now any other time whether it's in discussion or any other place when you refer to that same paper it will always remain one again it doesn't change its number many times people mistake it now after one two and three now if you go to another like source now you don't jump to number seven and leave out five six in between so one two three four and then seven doesn't come it has to be serially numbered so if you look at it here 13 14 and 15 it can't be 13 and 14 is missing and 15 comes here so it has to be that way and when it's in the reference list you will again go about listing now here you don't follow the alphabetical order here you follow as they appear in the text so that way you have different styles i will not go into details of that author and date style is apa style so just to quickly run through the Vancouver, usually we use uh, journal reference or book reference or internet reference. Now you have different elements, bibliographic and punctuation. So if you look at it here, we usually write the surname first for all the authors. Up to six, we write all the names. If it's more than six, we write six names and et al. That is, and co-workers or and associates. Then we write the correct title. That's in green on your screen. Then we use an abbreviated correct form of the journal as it's used in LLM catalog or PubMed. And then we use the year of the article where it was when it was published. We use a semicolon and then we use the uh, volume number. 
we generally don't use the issue number and then we give the page numbers so this is how we cite okay and this is how we go in for the in the text if you see superscripting okay so this is how we go about so again in a book it can be the person who's written that okay and if it's written by a person and it's edited by somebody else this is how we go about so we write who's the editor what is the name of the textbook where is the place of publication who is the publisher which year and what are the page numbers so this is how we go about okay so this is how we go and internet again we can go for websites or it can be uh, databases it can be journal articles because many of them are available again when we say that we say when it was cited so you put up cited as well so that's quickly about this now just to quickly ask the viewers or the participants on your screen you find that you know vancouver style is put up can quickly somebody tell me what what is wrong if at all there is something wrong with this reference you can put up in your chat boxes so that i take some few seconds to take some breath So yes, you got it right. See two yeah, authors. Right. So it's it's need not many people will say that journal article journal title should be in italics. In Vancouver, you don't need that. But journal is not abbreviated. You're right. Journal is not abbreviated correctly. It's completely put. So you should use journal abbreviation. Then after the surname itself, there's comma. That should not be. It should be Wolves M. Then Kaminsky A. Then comma. It's or full stop. So it has to be like that. And again, you need to list all six authors and then. Now let's come to reference management softwares. There are many of them: EndNote, RefWorks, Citation C, Zotero, Mendeley. So many. uh usually zotero and mendeley are the ones which are commonly used zotero and mendeley both are free they are available they are uh, also available as a download today i will discuss a little about mendeley uh, mendeley has certain more advantages compared to zotero as well end note is paid or sometimes some of the institution might have subscribed usually in the west or you might get you know some uh, one month or something free refworks is another paid uh, so these are the the comparative this thing if you look at Zotero is free. It usually works with Open Office. Mendeley also does almost everything except for RefWorks, and it can also help you to capture. Zotero can help you to capture the web page. Mendeley can do that as well. Mendeley is actually a very good software. Now, for Mendeley, you need to download a desktop, or you can even use a a web version. So, Mendeley, you need to go to the site called Mendeley dot com. Please remember the spelling. It's M E N D E L E Y. mendeley when you do that now create your login there once you done that you can always log in now the good thing is if you have a id there and you logged in and you have a mendeley desktop as well you can sync it or you can do it across the devices so if you have it on the phone as well though i don't prefer it on the phone i usually use it on the desktop or the laptop and the the web as well so you can have this kind of a setup now here you see you can directly import documents okay you can and then you have a web importer plugin as well and you have another plugin which is for uh, using it with the word document now if you see here i have created a library and i also can create folders if you see these are my folders so i have two studies going on i can put up folders i can have multiple folders and it gives me up to 2 gb of space which is free beyond 2 gb i need to pay in mendeley but i think 2 gb suffices and you can always use it so this is my library and all these documents are there and this is a web version i can i will show you my uh, desktop version as well now how does it help when i build this and already put up all these articles they are stored there now when i want to cite now once i go to my uh, word document now if you look at this i see a, a thing here which is like you know you see this here the citation insert citation and open mendeley okay so i can so i can actually on top if you see my task bar in my word document when i open i will see this now how does it help let me give you a live demo 
let me see if if i can give you a live demo so hopefully this will work uh, okay so i will give you a, a demo of this so the help that mendeley does to me is when i write and i keep citing it's much easier for me to manage and then and any time i want to change one style to another from say harvard to vancouver or vancouver to harvard or ap or chicago it's just a click of a button one the other thing what it also helps me with is Sir, if i insert we insert we are only able to see your powerpoint presentation okay let me let me just can i share my uh, word document as well yeah yeah you have to stop your screen share and uh, go back to word okay okay i'll do that i think now it is yes yes come okay so if you see i just type to minimize time so this is a trial run and i put now i'll just try to show you so i insert something else okay so so i type this is for demo and i see i go to uh, references here the references tab on top and i say insert citation okay so i will put insert citation here and it will give me all the articles that is there on my mendeley so now i say that you know a particular can you see my screen yes. so i say that you know i will say this so this i will insert now so i will put this and then so i want to put that that as my citation so i say for example uh this particular paper and i say okay so the moment i say okay it will automatically get inserted there okay and you see automatically the number has become 2 and it's come here this paper okay initially i had only 5 but now when i inserted this automatically the numbers have changed and now this is vancouver now if i want to change it to say some other style so i say howard you see one click of a button it becomes jain 2007 rani somu jain 2017 so automatically it has changed so it makes my life much easier of course i have listed the references on this page itself uh, so that it's easier for demo purpose i will obviously be doing it at the end of the document but this is how you go with mentally so this makes life much easier again at a click of a button i can change it to again if you see apa style 6th or 7th edition so i go for 7th edition and this changes it again so if you look at it my whole job is much easier i've changed it to chicago now okay so this is how i can use mendeley for using it for citation as i go along now let me go back to Where's my? Okay, now I'll share my. Ani- Animesh, uh, there are two participants who have raised their hands. Okay, what is it about? Uh, Can we wait for a five minutes or something because I'm about to complete the segment. I've done the live demonstration of Mendeley, so that's about. And I was thinking if I have or. maybe i i'll take questions that's better because we, it's almost 9:15 so i think i'll yeah so it's okay yeah let's let's listen to the questions there are there are two people mahesh and anvit you have raised your hands can you please tell us what is your question please type it on the chat window Dr. Anvit and uh, Dr. Mahesh, can you please type your question on the chat window? You have a, or you have raised your hand. Okay. 
any other questions till they come uh, vijay lakshmi dr vijay lakshmi dr praveen can you help me guide because or let me see if i can get the chat chat window uh so a few uh, most of the yeah. questions have been already answered okay uh, if there are any uh, uh, further question queries if they put we will just try to have it so. yeah uh, two people had raised hands uh, i was told right so are they yeah jyoti rak somebody has raised hands i think so and i thought An anvit had raised hands can you uh, there is a question sir can you again display the slide on reference which cell slide because reference this one yeah this uh, some people are asking for the word also okay and, yeah and uh, can uh, can i repeat the last screen on mendeley insertion and we and with is okay. asking yeah okay so i will not go into the live demonstration i'll just say, say for example if i'm writing something here okay so you see i go to the reference tab on my because i have already downloaded on my desktop and i have already installed mendeley so after i have done that i have imported my documents that i want to use to uh, you know write my uh, document or article so i have put them already and i can always classify them as well okay with uh, difficulty of time i'll not go into creating folders and all it's easy and lot of uh, tutorials are available so once i have done that what i do is i click on this tab here so, sorry so i click here if you can see that my arrow here so once i do that what happens is it will automatically insert the citation i mean it will ask me which citation so that paper i can select and i'll just say insert click just you know and that will and once i'm done with it i say insert bibliography which is here this tab here so if you say insert bibliography after i'm done with writing all the things what you see here the references list automatically will get populated you don't have to do anything further and as i showed you in the live demonstration the moment i change this vancouver to anything else if you see here so that vancouver if i change automatically it will change so vancouver becomes uh, chicago harvard apa apa 6 7th whatever so i can easily do that so this insert citation is something which you need to and this insert bibliography that you need to so once you're writing you keep writing and then you whichever paper you're taking it from so you put insert citation after the end of that sentence or in between the sentence where you want to insert the reference and then you continue and once you're done with everything in the end you say insert bibliography and click on that automatically it will be populated and you will get a list and suppose you send it to one publication and you want uh, you get it back and then it's rejected and you want to send it to another journal that journal uses another style of referencing you don't have to worry about or if you think that you know okay after based on the reviewers comments you want to insert one or two more references in the beginning or in the middle of the paper you please go ahead do it cite and then automatically all the numbers will because this is one of the hassles which we usually when we start writing we face so the moment we you know change one reference number automatically so this will do it yes so so jyoti rak you've been uh, unmuted can you please ask your question jyoti rak can you please speak and you've raised your hand and you've been unmuted a participant called jyoti rak jyotirak at gmail dot com. Ah, uh, she's put a question. There are some references which we cannot import in Mendeley. In that case, how will those references be cited? There are some references which cannot be imported in Mendeley. Okay. In that case, how do we cite those references? What kind of references are we talking about? Because Mendeley has an option of manually adding as well. So if you have it as a PDF or something, it can be manually added. you can even build on even what the the automatically you add from the import of uh, your desktop or from the net even there you have manual editing option where you can add your uh, summary or abstract or maybe if you can if you want i will show you maybe uh, you can even make notes so mendeley gives you that feature where you can make notes and you can use that and later you can come back to that so mendeley gives you that feature as well right there is another question how can we write the 
reference of WHO or any other thing which is citing any page which is talking about the global burden of disease. I think we answered that. No, you so, can. Uh, and if you yeah. want, you can you can just Google depending on which style. If you're using Vancouver style, there is a ready-made guide uh, which is very comprehensive, which gives you every kind of and with examples it gives you. So if you follow that, it will give you that. So yeah, we have we have uh, shared the link to the style yeah. guide also on the yes. chat box already. Very good. Very good. Yes. As Rashmi said, this is actually a Herculean task, but then we're trying to accomplish this one in the limited time. The other thing, probably first time in the webinar mode, because you know this is difficult to do, and it usually takes uh, half to one day to like you know get this thing whole thing as a hands-on. Any other questions? Anything that's coming up? Praveen, anything that? Has come and then we missed out. Okay, request to share the recorded version that will be done. Okay, Does quoting definition? Email, email of the speaker. I just saw something. It just went up. Does quoting definition come as plagiarism or something? I think if I get that correctly. So as I said, uh, see, plagiarism is like you know many times unintentional also. But the best way is to avoid that is to actually cite. I think you know we should understand that we need to give and if you see my presentation most of the places if I've used figures and all you would have seen a box below with the source cited okay so we should ideally do that because if I'm not doing that there is always a chance that uh, people will think that this may uh, have been taken from somewhere else and the credit has not been given sometimes it happens inadvertently or many a times it's the issue of people not being aware that this is so that's something which is important. Hospital management search sites, please, for thesis reference. Again, as I said, there are so many databases. You can look for them. Uh, again, it depends on your topic. So it's not that you know you have a specific hospital management, at least not that I'm aware of. But you should be able to get it from. Have I lost contact or something? Okay. You are audible. You are audible. Okay. Sir. Please okay. Start because my screen suddenly I saw it went blank. So, uh, okay, so basically, again, it depends on your topic and you just need to uh, search based on your topic and then go to the different websites and, and the databases and then again, use these kind of uh, search strategies and some tricks that I have given you and also use the guides that we have shared the material. Any other? Question, burning question. You can be provided to provide reference and record the input into memory by yourself or mentioning that's a good Okay, there is a question. Dr. Animesh, sir. Hello. 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 Uh, yes, Harsha, I think he's uh, lost connectivity. Maybe he's coming back. Ma'am, uh, one question from my side. So for any journals or thesis, is there any lim uh, minimum limit of uh, references that have to be added and the maximum limit? See that, uh, that, uh, that depends on the topic that you are uh, writing about. See, if uh, you are writing something new, you may not have enough uh, references. So whatever is available, you have to cite. But if something that has been already uh, studied extensively and you're only adding a new dimension to it then you'll be able to give more references to it so it depends upon the uh, uh, topic on which you're uh, writing or uh, topic of your research and your research question okay. uh, but uh, generally if you are reporting a case it's a case report 
then uh, your uh, journals expect that the number of references should be restricted to 10 or 15. But uh, if it's an original research article, you can go uh, a little bigger number. Some journals also have certain criteria. Yeah, but there is nothing like, you know, numbers or something. But again, depends, as you said. And sometimes if you're writing a short article, there might be restrictions on number of references. Or some of the times, like when you are even writing as a, uh, a research article, which is taken as a letter to editor, sometimes they'll restrict it to five, seven, or maximum 10, depending on the journals. Okay, sometimes that is there, but it's nothing like that. There is a, and again, it's not, not like minimum or maximum, but again, it should be like uh, reasonably uh, comprehensive. And at the same time, what you need to do is that you need to give recent and relevant literature. Again, recent, somebody told me that, you know, and uh, I'm still to find a PAKKA reference, but then about 10 years max. So that should be uh, fine. But again, if you have a seminal or a very important paper which dates back 20 years back, please go ahead and do that if it's relevant. So I guess that completes uh, almost everything. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, we can call off for today and uh, we'll be pro meeting on 18th May. Uh, uh, Shri Arsha, uh, there is one. Uh, Maria is uh, now asking to unmute. There is a question. I think. Yeah. Okay. I will change the settings now, where participants can unmute themselves if they want to speak any uh, queries. Can I? Can I ask? Yeah, please, please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. It's a very good uh, in, uh, informative session, sir. I wanted to know. About literature mapping, sir, uh, I have a little, uh, not very uh, confused little. What is literature mapping exactly? Literature mapping? Yeah. Uh, I'm not very sure. I would not like to go into that because I'm not very sure. I have come across this term, yes, I think, but I am not very sure. I, I, I will have to look at this and get back to you. So I, I no, sir, so maybe you can get in touch or something. So I, I cannot really tell you offhand. Okay. Sorry. Can I say something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are two components. One is something called, uh, sir, I'll just make an attempt. Yeah, please, uh, please. There are two components. One is something called literature matrix and other is something called literature map mapping. Okay. In literature matrix, what you will do is you will download whatever literature you have, the articles, you will be arranging them in the order and you'll be just mentioning what, what is that study meant for, how at the study was attempted, what are the key results, and what are the loopholes into it okay so you will make a matrix of this kind this kind of a matrix is going to help you in finding out what are all the common loopholes in different studies and how those loopholes can be bridged okay and coming to the literature mapping literature mapping is nothing but mapping the uh, mapping the studies the literature the articles based on the objectives of your study and based on your outcomes for example, sir was talking about the communication skills. There are 10, 20, 30 different communication skills and which part of the communication skill the article belongs to. You will be mapping those articles according to the objectives or the variables that you are going to use in the study and mapping can be done for different components. It could be mapping related to the author, mapping related to the theme, mapping related to the result, mapping related to the outcome. Okay, so these are different ways in which we can map. If you map this this uh, map, this literature matrix and literature mapping, they are the systematic ways to preserve your literature and retrieve them whenever you want to use them in your research work. Thank you, sir. Uh, Maria. Hope I, I answered. Yes, sir. Thank you Thank so you, much. Sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Praveen. Thank Welcome, you. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Hello. 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 Yeah, someone is saying hello, you can ask the question. Uh, hello, sir. I'm Rinku here, Dr. Rinku. I would just like to know that uh, what are the limits for giving the re or citing the references? I mean, uh, more is better or uh, is there any number which can be standardized? Okay. Rinku, thank you for asking that question. We've just recently, just now, I think, answered. See, there's nothing like a limit. It depends on what is the purpose. And as I said, it should be recent and relevant. And again, if it's a, a paper, which is a short paper, and if you're sending it for journal article publication, 
it depends on again the guidelines from the journal as well now again for original articles some of the times some of journals have a limit some i have also come across 30 and all but it's nothing like you know there's a limit so as long as you are comprehensively able to uh, give the citation and also satisfy that it is relevant as well as recent okay. but again as i said if it is something which is very important and even if it was a little old 20 years 25 years that's okay uh maximum the recent ones are uh, acceptable right sir yes recent ones but that's what i said it should be relevant you should have been comprehensive and it should also be uh, at the same time uh, given like all the recent ones also right sir thank you so much sir okay thank you thank you sir so, so there sir? is a question hello yeah please go ahead Uh, so uh, when we when we when we are writing a review article can we quote another review article you can but advisable like you know it it will be good that because if you are writing as a review i think again you can do that but see the purpose is when you are writing a review article you are trying to synthesize from others or otherwise you take some reviews and then so that's a different thing this review of reviews as i said but if you quote one and if you think that it's justifiable or if there is very relevant or if you have a reason or maybe for discussion or whatever purpose that's a different thing but otherwise i would say that advisedly i would say you know go in for other articles and then so it, it's like you know you are citing one review article and then you are writing another one with other sentences so it may not really be uh, always a good idea okay i think it's already past 9:30 so It's shall we yeah So Hello. It's just about nine thirty. Hello. Maybe this is the last question we will take. Uh, somebody is asking a question. Please go on. We can hear you. Yeah, that's what. This is the last question we will take. This is Arun here. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, in the reference side, uh, for example, if you are writing a reference uh, for uh, an image wanted. animation has said that the review of literature is very important so if you quote like that in vancouver city we have animation bracket it has a number right i Where could not i could not understand what are you saying arun in the in the reference when you are in your quoting the reference through a mendeley software mm -hmm. there is option in the call vancouver style which which make it as a numbering style 1 2 3 it goes on like that right right in the apa style it, it gives the author name uh, yes the uh, year right Yes, uh, but when you're writing a review or something in the body of the this one, so when you're having you're writing it, some of the sentence will be like that, uh, saying author's name and containing the sentence. For example, if I say Arun has done this study, so I will be writing Arun number. I'll be writing it. But when no, no. Do, so you can still go ahead with you know that, and then you can say that. But see, the entire reference you will not be put right. So you'll say Arun said so and so, or Arun's paper cites, or you will say Arun paper in two thousand whatever described this. But you will not give the full reference there, right? So you can still put a citation, and then you can write it in the reference. Okay, but when you go to the APA form, it will become twice the name. For example, Arun bracket Arun under with the year, so it will become twice that. So most of the studies don't accept that, right? So how do you going to change that? Uh, in No, so I didn't get you. So in APA, uh, in in the APA format, we change that into APA format. It's a Arun bracket again. Arun in the year two thousand twelve, whatever it is, let's say so and so. So the name is being twice there. So uh, I think none of the uh, the journals accept that. So then you have to look at the journal guidelines. Okay. Okay, so Dr. Sri Harsha, shall we close now? Yes, sir. We can call off for today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. See you again on 18th, sir. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sri Harsha, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, Dr. Praveen. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all the feedback to them. Yeah. Thank you. We meet on 14th. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you.